James Webb Manning, age 57, was married to Victoria Ronak Bunton, age 35. Victoria was a home health worker. She enjoyed cooking large meals for her family. Victoria had two sons from a previous relationship, Zyquan, age 13, and Isaac, age 16. Zyquan attended Lang Middle School, and Isaac went to Skyline High School. The family lived in apartment 7205, at Ash Creek Apartments. Located on the 2600 block of John West Road in East Dallas, Texas. On August 31st in 2020, James Manning signaled an emergency through his medical alert device, and told them he had killed his family, and told them where the bodies could be located. Dallas police were dispatched to the apartment complex. Inside the home they found the bodies of Victoria, Zyquan and Isaac. All were dead from gunshot wounds. Manning was at the residence. After police discovered the bodies of his family, he was immediately taken into custody. He was taken to police headquarters to be interviewed. Dallas detectives spent several hours at the home gathering evidence. Manning's white Nissan was towed away for processing. Manning waived his right to have an attorney present during the interrogation. During his interview, he told investigators that when he woke up that morning, he and his wife began arguing. He told officers he had a headache, and she and the children were being too loud. He said he was tired of all three yelling, and telling him there was nothing wrong with him. He said that the argument got louder, and he ended up shooting his wife twice, then his stepsons. He admitted that he did not call police for over an hour after the initial shootings. Manning was later booked into Lou Sterrett jail. He was charged with capital murder, which is considered a felony, punishable by death or life imprisonment. During the investigation, officers located the handgun inside the home. Deputy Chief Ruben Ramirez spoke in a press conference saying, this is a horrible incident. Our hearts go out to everyone that's touched by this. Community activist Yahim Israel, founder of Watchman Nonprofit, said that he worked at the Rosemont apartment many times in the past to educate people about their rights and resources for help. He said, feels like we were too late. If we could have been more involved, might have been able to save a life or two. There's no reason why anybody would want to harm her, because she was a good person, said Bunton's sister, Barbara McGee. They were well-respected kids she treated them good. She was there for her boys. She was there for her family. Some of Bunton's family members say Manning would always stay in the car. They would try to welcome him in, but he didn't want to socialize. He wouldn't talk to them or anything. They say there was always something strange about him. The family's next-door neighbor, Chanel Lockhart told reporters that the teenage boys were very intelligent, and Victoria was so kind. And she had a heart. She was so sweet to everybody. You'd never think that one day he would call and say he killed his kids, said Lockhart. Victoria Bunton's aunt, Aura Jewett, told reporters, she just loved her family. She loved her children. She went on to say there were no signs of domestic abuse. You kill somebody because you had a headache, and they was making noise. Really? You could have taken two Tylenol and laid your butt down. She continued saying that the death penalty would be too easy. She said Isaac would have turned 17 this Friday. Manning's bond was set at $3 million. Manning requested a court-appointed attorney. Former prosecutor Toby Shook said the defense lawyer is going to have some psychiatrist look at him because there's going to be some mental issues, and be the only defense you have in this case. He continued saying that Manning reporting the murders points to psychological problems. If Manning is found to have any mental issues the U.S. Supreme Court has issued rulings that make it tougher to seek the death penalty. A memorial was held on September 10 at the Life Church in Dallas, Texas for Victoria, Zyquan and Isaac. 
Christopher Stokes, age 43, had a lengthy criminal past dating back to 1997. He was charged for domestic violence against two different women in 2002. He was sentenced to probation in one of those cases, and ordered to attend domestic abuse counseling in the other. He was ordered not to own any firearms. Again in 2007 he pled guilty to felony battery, felony bail jumping, and intimidating a witness. He spent four and a half years in prison for those offenses. Again he was forced to go to intervention classes. In 2012 he again pled guilty to misdemeanor battery regarding domestic abuse. He was sentenced to 18 months in prison. In 2017, he pled guilty to disorderly conduct and spent a month in jail, with limited release only for work. Stokes had a long-time girlfriend, Teresa Thomas, age 41. Stokes and Thomas had one child together, 15-year-old Demetrius Thomas. Teresa had a daughter from a previous relationship, 16-year-old Tierra Agee. Stokes and Thomas lived on the corner house at the 2800 block of North 12th Street, in Milwaukee. On April 27 in 2020, at 10.30 a.m. Stokes called 911, and told the operator his family was dead. Moments later he called again, and told the dispatcher he just massacred his entire family, he said he was feeling very anxious, and he was about to kill his grandchild as well, then hung up. Police scrambled to the home, where they found Christopher Stokes, sitting outside on the porch. Officers immediately entered the home. In the living room they found 19-year-old Marcus Stokes deceased. He was Christopher Stokes' nephew. Further in the home, in a bedroom, they found four more victims. All dead from gunshot wounds. Investigators found 12 spent shotgun shells on the bedroom floor next to the victims. In another bedroom officers found the shotgun on the floor as well as a box of shotgun shells. The four other victims found in the bedroom were Teresa Thomas, Stokes' girlfriend. Their son, Demetrius Thomas. Teresa's daughter, Tierra Agee, and also his niece Lakitha Stokes. A three-year-old child was found inside the home, unharmed. He was the sole survivor. He was taken to the hospital for evaluation and later released to family. He was determined to be the grandchild of Christopher Stokes and Teresa Thomas. An officer asked Stokes if he heard any gunshots. He responded, yeah, I didn't hear them, I did them. He was immediately arrested and taken to the Milwaukee County Jail. Later it was determined the child witnessed his family being murdered. He asked his grandfather not to hurt him, so the child's life was spared. Over 100 distraught neighbors, friends and relatives gathered outside the house right after the murders. Many were crying at the loss of their loved one. Several fights broke out. One family member was treated for shock. The scene was described as volatile. Mayor Tom Barrett said the loss of life is something I take very seriously, and this is obviously a horrific incident in our city. The incident is the worst shooting in Milwaukee since 2005 when Terry Michael Ratzman murdered seven people at the Living Church of God in Brookfield before committing suicide. According to the report, he blamed the church for his financial problems and his depression. Johnny Hall, brother of Teresa Thomas, said my sister and two of her kids were killed by her kid's father today. This is a tragedy for our entire family, and words can't explain what we are going through. Christopher Stokes' bond was set at $500,000. The Milwaukee County District Attorney's Office charged him with five counts of first-degree intentional homicide, use of a dangerous weapon, and one count of possession of a firearm by a felon. If found guilty he could be sentenced to five life sentences plus 35 additional years. A month prior to the murders, Stokes began therapy for anger issues and hearing voices. However, when the COVID pandemic crisis hit, his in-person sessions were switched to over-the-phone sessions. 
Stokes attorney Oplan Dobbs said his client's actions were not something a sane or normal person would do. Nothing else makes sense. Nothing else would explain why this would have happened. Other family members said that the couple had a tumultuous relationship. They would break up, then get back together. He once broke her arm, and the relative believed she wanted to leave him. Carmen Petra, president and chief executive of Sojourner Family Peace Center in Milwaukee said, What I know about history is that history can be the best predictor of future violence, and so we have to take that seriously, she said. What we've done as a community is try to present opportunities for people to change their behavior. We need to be relentless on the doors we've opened for people. We need to get there sooner, she added. It's just a horrible, horrific, tragic day and circumstance. She continued, if you're afraid for your life, we are here and we can help you build that bridge. Call for help, she said. If you're hurting someone, call for help. Stokes was examined by two psychiatrists to see if he qualified for the insanity plea due to mental illness. However, both determined he was mentally sane. At Stokes' sentencing, he was allowed to address the court. He said, Don't know what in the world came over me. Woke up and just had blood on my mind. It was, I don't know, the reality is, I can't take it back. I did the ultimate sin, I deserve to be locked up. I deserve everything I get. I'm not asking for no leniency or anything like that. I deserve it. No one in the world should have done what I did. Judge Michelle Havas sentenced Stokes to 40 years per victim, and added another five years for the illegal possession of a firearm, for a total of 205 years in prison. Teresa's brother, Johnny Hall said he was satisfied with the sentencing. Funeral services were held on May 3 in 2020 at the New Pitts Mortuary. Both James Manning and Christopher Stokes had anger issues, and possibly mental issues. It's difficult to say if better treatment could have prevented these tragedies, or if mental issues played any part. Either way, innocent lives were lost far too soon. If a partner shows even a hint of anger or mental issues may be institutionalizing that person until they show improvements may be the best option. Or get far away from the danger. Keep your plans to yourself and never tell that person you are leaving. Be ready and when the time comes just leave. Move far, far away and start your life over. That concludes this episode. Keep your eye out for the next volume coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.